and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northrow. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney in uh, at Myrick O'Connell, far away in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my, my seminars or presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Northbro, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to come to Marlboro where I live. They don't want to go to far away Westboro where my, they want to go, be right there. So the question is, who are the people you need to know and what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right there? So with me to find those great people is Liz Tridiak, who has been the Council on Aging, the Senior Center Director and the head of the Council on Aging since the very beginning of the pandemic. So some of you have never seen her, right? But I soon will, right? So you're gonna be going to the senior center. And and she always gets these great guests, but this is really an important show because this is about this is about the place where you wanna be hanging around and had prior, prior to the pandemic. So uh, Liz, can we talk about who we've got for guests? Ironically, one of our guests actually <laughs> had to go. Right, right. So she's going to be back, but she's like, that's right, that's right. So she, she's in the middle of doing something, right? So Liz, who do we have today and what are we talking about? Hi, Arthur. Um, today we have with us Carolyn Harrington from the Bistro at 119, our on-site uh, restaurant here at the Senior Center. And right next to her, that empty space is where Vicki Killeen will be as soon as she's back from the order that just got delivered to the kitchen. <laughs> So oh, I, I have been waiting 13 long months to be able to welcome Vicki and Carolyn to the show so I can finally say welcome back to the Bistro and get that back in action. So welcome, Carolyn. Thanks for joining Hi, us. Hi. Thanks, thanks for having us. <laughs> We're really excited to be back. Uh, it's been a long time. So. It's been far too long. It's been far too long. So I just wanted to bring you and Vicki on the show to talk about what is new and coming up at the Bistro since it, we've had this whole chunk of time where we can kind of reimagine things, get a little bit creative, but then we also have to add on this whole other layer of safety and sanitation and um, extra caution sprinkled on top. So do you want to talk about the reopening a bit? Sure, very excited about it. We we hope to be opening the end of May. Um, it'll it'll be a slow start. We're going to feel it out and um, start with to-go orders. We'll um, also be kind of starting with a, 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 a barbecue, a chicken barbecue, which will be our big welcome back to everybody. We'll have uh, seats out in the lawn and we'll also pack up orders to go if people would like, if they're nervous about getting out in public again. Um, but we're very excited to be hosting that. And, and Vicki and I have been busy prepping for, here she is now, back on the water. <laughs> We've been busy cooking and preparing for everybody's return. Uh, and we just can't wait for it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. It's so exciting. And Arthur, you were here last week. I think you dropped in to say hello and you, you missed Carolyn and Vicki, but you should see it in the kitchen right now. They have desserts on the counter getting made and prepped and all kinds of fun things happening back there. <laughs> so, so, so No, you go ahead. Because I'm just, I'm just so curious about, because you did have this year. So I actually, I was just going to ask, so so what have you guys been doing, right? So I mean, this has been right. It's been a hard. It's been a hard thing, right? And we have I know a new menu. We have a new menu. Yeah, we've been working on that. Um, we made some some adjustments here and there. It's like starting over again. So um, yeah, we've been busy. Plus, um, I'm involved a lot in the, the community of Northboro, and we, um, as a committee, uh, run the food pantry at 37 Pierce Street here in Northboro. And what we did last week, we um, installed a friendly fridge. It's outside of the food pantry and what that enables people to get free food if the pantry is not open. So oh. what, yes, yeah, so what um, happened was this lovely lady by the name of Maria Fitzgerald, who runs the Fitzgerald Institute uh, School in Northboro, she put the refrigerator in and our uh, contact who is Tim Shea. He is our landlord. He put kind of like in a, um, almost like a little shelter, but the, 
the refrigerator and the freezer are exposed to people. And on the fridge, it says, fill it and take it. And it's called Friend Fridge. And they're, um, they're put out um, amongst Middlesex and Worcester County. So what we do is we have volunteers to come and they kind of adopt it for the week, fill it up with milk, uh, fresh fruits, vegetables. We can't take any meat because of the Board of Health. So we right. do frozen meals as long as they're, you know, it's registered of what is in it and um, apply it on the, some kind of a container, an application of what's in it. So that's great. And also the food pantry has been booming. We open Wednesday morning, Thursday night. Wednesday night, I have community meals. We at Trinity Church parking lot, we do curbside meals. Um, Liz and Carolyn have helped there. And what we do is we offer meals to about a, between 115 and 130 residents. They don't have to be from North Row. And what they do is they come in, um, we put a meal in their car and all the restaurants are involved in the town at $5 meal. So we take that out of our, um, our funds. So the people in Northboro are very generous in donating money. But it's free to the customer. And it's free to the customer, yes. I see. So it's a $5 meal. So the restaurant folks are really doing the discount to you. And then you're getting contributions. Correct. So you're paying the restaurant people. Yes, yes. It's done through what we call helping hands, um, which is part of, it's, it's like one big cycle from here to the pantry to community meals. To, you know, it's just one big cycle here from the senior center because a lot of our guests, you know, take that for meals. So that's great. I I have to say, Arthur, that Northboro, Northboro is just one of the most food secure communities that I've come across. Like uh, Vicki just said, it's like you have Bay Paths Meals on Wheels five days a week, cold meals for the weekends. You have community meals. You have the senior center bistro. You have the food fridge, the food pantry. If you need a meal in Northboro, there are so many options. Like I get chills thinking about it because it's just the community has to come together in such a way that um, the needs are just met from so many different angles. It's just incredible. And these two ladies, they've been busy this whole pandemic. Right. Like they're not sitting at home relaxing watching tv the whole time they've been out there in the community just volunteering and just being involved in so many different things so i, I just i'm so happy right. that you're on our team here Grateful. the gratefulness of the people is amazing if you could stand there on a wednesday night and watch us put food in their cars they are just in pouring rain we've been through the snow we've been through the ice they still come and they're just so grateful that we do that. But it, it's, Carolyn, it's, go ahead. I was just gonna say, there's this old, I think this is, it's a, it's a, actually an Arab expression, giving honors the giver, you know? So that it's, it really, it really is an expression of the fact that people, people are, people are stepping up people because they realize this is a really, really important thing. This is just it a really is. important thing. Right. That's, that's just a, so have, have those numbers how have those numbers changed as as the pandemic has progressed? And how do you think that this and and, and obviously you've been involved for a long time. Right. How do you think that's going to play out now over the next for the rest of this year, say, as as things open up? Well, when we started community meals, we had well, we'll say, I think last July. Well, let's do thirty five or forty meals. <laughs> yeah. So has progressed to one hundred and thirty. Wow. So that'll tell you there. Food pantry um, has been wonderful because we have gotten so much donation for food that we were um, overwhelmed with what we have. And we also started a food pantry at the American Ooh. Legion in North Row. So that's another thing. I think we have another order. They just came back. Yeah, yeah. we wanted to check. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the delivery truck yeah. came back. Excuse me. <laughs> I think you forgot to drop something off. Yeah, so we started a food pantry up at the American Legion in Northboro for all the veterans. And Junior Women's Club put up a bookcase. So they come in, they can get books for exchange because our library is now open, but it's been closed for a long time. So yeah. little things like that have progressed through the year. So to answer your question, how did we stay busy? That's how we stayed busy. Yeah. And, and, and Carolyn, she is amazing on the computer, right, Liz? She yeah. has all these little fancy things. I'm a hands-on girl. Give me something to do. And I can do it, but go to that computer. 
have a hard time with that. See, I'm in awe of both because I can't do either one of those two things. I can't oh, do yeah. the computer and I can't do anything hands on. Yeah. This is really kind of embarrassing. You know, I was I, I remember I remember my folks saying that, you know, you're one of those kids that in the Middle Ages, back when you actually had to know how to do something, they would have left you out in the cold to die, you know, when you're, <laughs> just, you know, so I'm, yeah, but I'm just in awe. But, it, but it's obvious that the two of you work well as a team. Oh, we are. We're like one. <laughs> and we agree on everything because we have such good ideas, you know, and she, we work off each other. And it's the best thing that ever happened to the bistro. And she came uh, three years ago and it, it made my life a lot easier because it was really, really hard before being one, just one person. Liz, can I just ask yeah. one, one other question about the fridge? I've never heard of that before. That's the most wonderful thing. So, so to, yeah, cool. the friendly fridge is, is um, amazing. And we're trying to get one in Marlboro at your food pantry in Marlboro. Yeah. yeah. Because I run um, our father's table on Monday and Thursday nights. We bring oh. food to the Brazilian, uh, at the Brazilian church next to the, the Masons there. Yeah, and my, my wife. That, my wife works at our father's table when it's the Immaculate Conception night. Yes, right. right. I see. I've seen her. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yes. So it's it's a great place, too. So I hope it just progresses, this friend, friend fridge. Yeah, it will. It will. That's such a good idea. It is. You know, that's a simple the idea. Simple it's a idea. idea. It's a people idea. That's right. And, you know, and, and I, I always felt, I always tell people money follows good ideas, you know. Mm -hmm. An idea like that, you know, then to get the equipment and stuff, you got to get it. But it's such a good idea that you could see people going, "Oh, that's really good," you know, because it, it's in it, in it, in it's in it's in it's very hands-on and very no middlemen, you know. Yeah, and it's and, great. And, like if you needed a, a gallon of milk on the weekends for the kids and you don't have the money to get it, hopefully right. it'll be there at that the friend fridge. So, the are you? Is this also as a solicitation to the vo to volunteers who Correct. would be willing to volunteer for a week, yes. right? To kind and of you be. Would adopt their you would adopt the fridge for the week. You adopt maybe, the fridge. Maybe one or two hundred dollars, depending what you what you want to put in it. Right. Um, but it's great. Like we put in eggs and cheese and yogurt and bread, you know, the staples. And then I noticed the other day someone had put some fresh vegetables and fruit, um, ice cream in the freezer for you know bread in the freezer. You can just take a loaf of bread out. Yeah, it's really it's really a nice concept, I think. Anyway. Yeah. This help, is help the town. There's this coffee cherry Coke that Liz said she's got a large, well, we won't go there, a large quantity of. She'd probably love to donate it. But, uh, I'm not going to shop. <laughs> we won't go there. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is, this is just so exciting, and I'm so happy to be talking to you. Um, I did want to just bring up our chicken barbecue, Vicki, yes. on June 8th. It's our Welcome Back Bistro Barbecue. Um, Carolyn mentioned it a little bit, but do you want to tell us a little bit about what you're sure. preparing and thinking? Yes, what we're going to do is a half a chicken. Uh, Carolyn is going to make her broccoli uh, salad and her famous potato salad. And I will cook and barbecue the chickens, um, a nice roll in butter, and fresh strawberries and shortcake for dessert. It's a $10 uh, donation to the senior center. And um, I guess you can get, you can call and get them, right, Liz? Yep. Um, for June 8th. Now you can picnic outside or we can do curbside, whatever is good. We'll put utensils in the, in the bag. And I think it's gonna be lovely. We've done it in the past in here, of course. So we have a hundred tickets out. So we're hoping we, we sell out. And when you say you're gonna, you can picnic outside, is there, no, I'm not familiar with the layout outside. Is there any, are there any yeah. benches there or do, yeah. or do Benches, there's tables, there's umbrellas. Liz just bought some nice tables and chairs as well. Um, yeah, or they can take it home, depending on the weather. Yeah. You know? And we, now, we have a rain date. We have a rain date for Wednesday the 9th. Right. And, and, you, and you've talked about how, how you use this time to kind of re-conceptualize -con the bistro. Correct. So is th is this part of that? Are you are you anticipating kind of in the longer run that this is really going to lead to more like outdoor dining and more people doing picnic stuff? And how, like how are you how are you thinking about the, the how this is changing? Because you guys are so. And by have you folks known each? Are you like twins separated at birth? Or <laughs> well, have you, you known yeah, each other for a long time? I'm like a second mom. Yes. 
<laughs> we love mangoes together, so she called me Mama Mango. <laughs> <laughs> That's We're great. very close, yes. <laughs> Actually, my it's my daughter's friend, but I befriended her as well. Oh, well, that, it, it, and it's obviously she's befriended you also. Yes. yes. A great, a spare mom, a spare We're, mom. We're two peas in a pod, yeah. Correct. And we both love to cook. Her so, desserts, so, anything in food. So tell us about, you know, the, do, do you, once again, you, you expecting more outdoor stuff. What, what else, are, how are you... Because what's what's been, as I said at the, when, at the beginning, what's been magic about the bistro is that it's transformed. I shouldn't say it's transformed. I think it was always there. I think I think one of the things that Kelly Burke really brought to this initially was this real vision that the that the bistro that that space and that not just the space but actually having food in this welcoming environment was going to make this just literally a, every senior's destination. It's like, oh, well, I'll just meet you at the bistro as opposed Correct. to it, you know, it, as opposed to it being more, you know, you're only going for programs and stuff. And it just, well, I'm well, sorry. I think, I think a lot of it will, you know, once we start up again with classes, uh, a lot of people like to attend classes and then come to the bistro either before or after. So once we're up and running again with classes, we hope that that, really won't change that all that much. But but yes, I mean, there will be more options outside for eating now that Liz got furniture. And if people wanna, you know, worried about eating in the dining area just yet, there is that nice nice option to eat outside and gather outside. Because I, I suppose this is, a, this is an interesting, it, it, it's part of a more of a general problem, you know, societally, how are we going, how are we adapt, going to adapt to some people it, it, people have different feelings about this. People have feelings about you know, maybe I want to continue wearing a mask because I know that the vaccine is, you know, 80 percent effective. But that means the bad news is 20 percent of people still get sick. You know, so maybe it still worries me or maybe I'm totally comfortable with this. And how do we mix and match, especially in an environment like a public building, the senior center, you know, where there are real constraints on on any kind of controls on any of this, you know. So it's a real interesting problem. Well, we've yeah. limited the tables in the bistro. We've limited the chairs. We wipe everything down. We're really in protocol. We're right up there. Hand sanitizers, taking your temp, wearing your masks in, uh, social distancing. Um, and, of course, the kitchen is immaculate. So, you know, we've really <laughs> tried. We really try to do, we have some great volunteers um, that will, you know, know the protocol and but we'll we keep plan, it as safe. We know? plan to start off slow yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, kind of ease into it and, um, you know, and hopefully eventually we'll be back in full swing again. Mm -hmm. We kept it open um, until almost the middle of April last year with curbside. Our first, right. our, our last big meal was um, St. Patrick's Day. And after that, we did curbside, um, and it, it went okay. Then, you know, really things started to close up, so we obviously had to close um, due to the fact that food costs are expensive and we didn't want to order things and have it go to waste. So I think that's how we're going to do it this the same way, open softly, um, order a few things at a time so that we don't have to throw anything away. We, like Carolyn, I think, told you we've um, done lasagnas and meatballs, and she's cooking roast pork, um, cube for Cuban sandwiches. We're doing desserts, big stuffed potatoes. All those things can be frozen. So God forbid if something does happen, the freezer is full and we're ready whenever we can. So that's now, how we have to look at it. So just one other question. So it, I, I'm sorry to be talking so much here, but this is really an amazing, this is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing with you guys, with, with what, you're, what you're all doing there. So are the dull men coming back soon? I remember... <laughs> Well, you have to ask Liz about that. <laughs> they haven't stopped meeting, Arthur. They haven't stopped? No, nope. they've met through okay. the entire winter outside in the parking lot. Dull but dynamic, this group. Yes. <laughs> they've met in the parking lot? Oh, That's like, how you look yeah. at that, Arthur. Because they, they clearly love it, right? I remember yeah. when we interviewed one of those, and it was like, what a wonderful idea, yeah. right? Just, and I just love the name. I guess my favorite part of the dull men was the fact that there's no president. It's like everybody, everybody, it, it reminds me of when I was a little kid and we had a club and everybody was like the the officer, like like the the the, the head of is like the assistant vice president or something. And everybody's an assistant vice president. There's no <laughs> president. It's just it's wonderful. 
They're a but, fun group. <laughs> but they talked about how what was really special is they could have these meetings and then they'd adjourn for lunch, you know, mm -hmm. that they were just kind of because oh, yeah. it was, once again, it was the, it was the effect of the bistro. It was the effect of the bistro. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I think cafes are the new hot thing in the senior center world. Um, bistros and cafes and even coffee bars lately. I think I've seen in the um, in the discussion groups on the directors forums. That's yeah. the next big thing. So I feel like we're a little bit ahead of the curve here with our our bistro and um, our Tuesday night dinners will be on hold for a while. We're just doing lunch service Monday through Thursday. But uh, Carolyn earlier was talking about doing dessert specials and really fun things to keep it fresh um, and kind of replace what we're missing with that dinner. So I'm really excited about our future and I think we're we're headed down a good path. That's headed down a really good path, yeah. right? And and so and so Liz can to, just to kind of complement that conversation, you know, for folks who are kind of watching, when when, when for the dull men or for anybody else, you know. <laughs> How, how are you how are you imagining that that piece of the rollout or is that is that changed at all? What are you thinking over the next few months? Because obviously the bistro, this is really what you're this is big news. This is like three weeks or something, and they're gonna be yeah, yeah. yeah. It, yeah. it's coming up fast. You know, yeah. I keep saying this here in the office, but this summer we're the rules are changing week to week. It's fast and furious with how the state is reopening, the reopening right. plans, the phases. Um, so starting next week here inside the senior center, we're allowing um, some of our smaller classes back inside. So starting Monday, the 17th. So yeah. people are actually coming back into the building. The bistro is opening May 24th. Um, we'll have 10 tables indoors for people to sit at and we'll encourage people to sit outside. But from now until early summer, we're on the track of reopening as long as the world cooperates with us. Right, right, as long as the world cooperates. Yes. Right. So, so, so are you guys figuring you're gonna have to, you're gonna need some more staff pretty soon? It, it just, it sounds like. It just, it's that's always that's kind of a touchy question. For the, for the we volume. Have do, we have nothing to do with that, unfortunately. We'll what, drop what, it at that. Yeah. For us, anyway, but, Liz can expound on that. But once again, one of the nice things from, you know, you've got is that this, the, you've got that wonderful friends group, right? Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, it, and I remember talking once again early on talking to Kelly Burke about how, you know, the, the friends group was so instrumental because they fronted the money. They fronted the initial to, 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 to basically to get it running. I mean, it, it's the same challenge that all small businesses face, right, is that mm -hmm. initial capital just to actually prove the concept and see right. if it works, you know? So, so it's wonderful that you, you know, you continue to have all of that, right? Right. The, and, the, uh, and great volunteers. Yes. And, and great volunteers. And so, have, without them. so folks, as we close the show, I'm just curious, are you looking for more volunteers? You know, because obviously there's a lot of work to, there's a lot of work to do, but how, how is, how do you think that's going to play out? Well, when we're not looking for more volunteers yet. Uh, because, you know, we have a lot of wonderful volunteers pre-pandemic that are looking forward to coming back and helping. So since it's going to be a slow opening and we're, we're going to just ease into it, we'll gradually add volunteers Correct. as as needed. And um, and then we always put word out if, if it if it grows to a, a greater need. Right. So, yeah. right. But we so couldn't Liz, do it without them. Couldn't do it with <laughs> So Liz, I can see why you wanted these folks on, right? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> I mean, they're like a great comedy team with a great message. You know, it's, it's, it, this, Dick this, and for hire. The, <laughs> it, this is, this is really, this is really important stuff. So, yeah. so Liz, th thanks a million for this. Ladies, thank you so much both for coming on. Thank you for good, having us. Thank you for having good, us. Good, good luck to the three of you. I can, you know, you can just kind of sense, even though it's Zoom, you can sense the energy in the room, you know, you can sense. People really pumped up about this really being a great, mm -hmm. and people are so up for a good summer, you know, yes. after yeah, last absolutely. year, where everybody is so ready for a good summer. So thank you very much. Liz, thanks once again for these great people that you bring on. And thanks for everything you're doing. This is just for thanks, this, Roger. it's a wonderful thing. So folks, go have a chicken dinner. Get to see, <laughs> get to see some folks. Wear your mask, $10. you know, if you figure all that out, you know, don't get sick anymore. This is gonna be a great summer. This is gonna be a great summer. 
So thank you all. Thank you for watching. And we're looking forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough. Thank you very much.